Welcome to Date with Danu and this is a very special edition and it's called The Naked Truth. Today on the show we are speaking to three very sharp, smart women who are very outspoken and who have their opinions that are very strong. Speaking about this as we celebrate International Women's Day during this month and also it's very important that we create awareness about what are the true factors that sometimes do not get highlighted. As my first guest on the show, I have someone who has graced many stages. It could be performances, it could be her great voice, it could be theatre. She has done it all. The one and only Kubrick Mbou. Hi, I'm Kumudini David. I am a voice coach, artist and a, a child rights advocate. Still. Child rights advocate, mental health advocate and sex education advocate. What do you think about Danu, yes? I think Danu is absolutely adorable. And he is uh, bigger than life. <laughs> well, never mind. What I think about uh, Date with Dano, I think it's fantastic that he is bringing candid conversation and uh, making it candid, you know, uh, and making it relatable. I like the fact that he's doing that and he's bringing awareness to a lot of things uh, in his own unique way. And so, Kubudini, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I am very honoured. So, Kumudini, in the last few years, apart from your great voice and what you have done in terms of entertainment, you have also been someone who has spoken about a few things that have been, uh, well, not always spoken about. Mm -hmm. um, let's speak about this passion towards creating awareness it could be for injustice, it could be for women, it could be for children and their safety. What sort of drove you to this? Well, um, I am a survivor of trauma. Um, I do not like using the word victim because I don't see myself as a victim. But I am a survivor of child abuse. Um, and it took me a very long time, um, a lifetime actually, to get to a point where I can function as a human and as myself without feeling like I'm dragging a de dead horse behind me. Um, and when I was in my 30s, I suddenly realized that um, I was still part of the problem because I haven't spoken out about my experiences and if I don't speak out, speak out about it, then how are others going to be careful? Um, so I decided to start talking, so that was 10 years ago. Um, and then from that point onwards, things have snowballed into, well, I started off by being a child rights advocate, but that has also snowballed into mental health advocacy um, and, uh, it's overall abuse now that I, I speak against. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind me asking you, when you say this is a part of your childhood and you talk about abuse, w would you like to elaborate a little bit? Right. So I was sexually abused, well, molested, from the time I was three till I was eight years old uh, by a guy who was living at home at the time. Um, with us, well, he wasn't part of the family, he was uh, helping the family out mm -hmm. and uh, he was in his 20s, so I was used as a uh, sexual object. Uh, At that time, because when you say 3 to 8, we know something is happening but we don't know what, what is happening. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, to be very, very blunt and frank and all of that um, and to put it out there, I climaxed as a child because I was sexually stimulated. You know, this is something that is the crux of most of the, um, the despair and shame that uh, victims, survivors of trauma feel is this, that if your body has reacted to the stimulation, then you are you as guilty. Yeah, you feel as if you've done something to deserve it. 
Um, now, at that time, I had no idea what was happening to me was wrong. I found out, or rather, I felt there was something off when he used me in front of a woman who had also come to help the family, and she was a mother. Um, he used me in front of her, and that felt off to me. That was around seven and a half, close to eight. Uh, so then... And was that woman aware of this situation? Well, yeah, she saw and me. Did she, and did she stop it? No, no, she was a part of it as well. She was a part of it. Um, she didn't touch me. Um, I do remember her looking a little shocked and maybe appalled, but then she didn't do anything to stop it. Um, so that rankled and then I stopped going when he called. Uh, how, how, who broke the silence? Who sort of um, brought it out into conversation level when you were eight? Mm, no one. It wasn't brought out into conversation level at all when I was eight. So your parents never knew about mm, it? They did not know about it. Ammi found out about it when I was 14. Uh, but she asked me details about, which, about it which I couldn't well vocalize at the time. I was not in a position to be able to say the word penis. It was too traumatic for me so I wasn't able to say it and she um, I think erred on the side of caution for her sake and uh, did not believe me. All right. Uh, we are going to bring another person onto this set to speak more about uh, one of her uh, missions in life has been not only to create long status updates on Facebook, <laughs> but also to create awareness about the projects and uh, issues that she really believes in. Uh, she also is pioneering a talk show which speaks about silence in the most loud way possible. I'm happy to have Shaniki. Hello, my name is Shaniki Diyavis. I'm a cause consultant, I'm a talk show host, and I'm an advocate and a coach and a couple of other things as well. Um, this is my second time on Date with Dani. As for what I think of Danu, <laughs> uh, he's like Colombo's favorite auntie. <laughs> and, uh, he knows too much, but he's also, you know, uh, someone who's always been there and someone I consider uh, Sri Lanka can trust to do the right thing. You ask people to say shh and make them speak about everything. Yes. Which is great. So now you have branched out into a, a different area of this show. How so? What? You're speaking, doing it in Sinhala as well. Yeah. Because which is amazing. Fine. It reaches yeah. out to more people and more news can Absolutely. be achieved. More, more reach yeah. and more different type of thinking could come through it. So yeah. well done on that. Thank you. It took a long time because I didn't have the funding to have the resources to be able to do it in like languages or to go out into communities which we are now going to do because we finally have a funder who came forward that I'm Wonderful grateful people. for. Wonderful yeah. people. Thanks. Thank you. That's always a tough call. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thanks for being on the show. Thank um, you. And so, we, go, we have to stop meeting like this, no? <laughs> um, so one of the reasons now, we, we all know, okay, month of March has been dedicated to women. Uh, and I'm also not somebody who likes to say it's dedicated to women. It's just we celebrate it. It's, it's a better way of saying it. Absolutely. Um, and it's it's a good thing because we tend to speak about things that are thought provoking, and we also tend to believe that today women have been given a place to speak, and and some have used the best out of it and created a place for them. Tell me, in Sri Lanka, you work on on a very grassroots level. How many kids are abused for a day, especially a girl child? Uh, I think the statistic at the last time, because Kumu was actually on my show when we talked about child sexual abuse, and it was one in every three children. It has experiences. And this is especially a girl violence. child. I don't know whether it's specifically girl child, because we have a large community of boy children who are abused, and even older boys. Uh, the problem is that we have such a culture of shame that they don't report it. Mm. So the chances of a girl child, uh, an experience being reported to the police 
is higher with boy children i don't know Spoiled because it takes away the, the manhood man, or whatever yeah. by you know You're the, not cool. yeah so i think i wouldn't say that girl children have a higher incidence but they are reported let's go back in time and what inspired you to do this show <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've always been a loud mouth no you've known that right yeah. uh, always i had an opinion um one is that like kumu in my past i have had experiences i've never spoken about them uh, not as a child but more as a young adult uh, i have experienced sexual violence and sexual harassment and all sorts of things right uh, for a long time where it is such a systematic normalized problem in the community you didn't know it was abuse mm. you don't identify you're a little naive if you've been brought up in a sheltered privileged place where you haven't been exposed to these realities sometimes you accept these as normal or you don't know what to do and you don't want to talk about it because you don't want your gapia to go down go right down. because i so I've, what was it for you was it yeah was it the fact that you didn't want to talk about it because no it's not that but it's just that i think i've spoken about it in other ways by right. championing social mm. justice issues by supporting maybe other girls and uh, women who have been through similar things where i can use my experience to support them not necessarily talking about me 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 this happened to me because i still don't feel comfortable but i am addressing the issue and i feel like i'm doing what i can in my limited capacity to raise awareness about it and to sort of create a movement around it of let's end the stigma you can't sort of we need to mm. speak up but we can speak up in different ways there is all f- types of abuse mm-hmm. not only for a woman but also for a man mm, yeah and uh, there are different elements to it and uh, that's what we are going to be touching on today on the show so do stay with us it's a day with dano on the other side next up on the show we have someone who is uh, fancy enough to grace our show with her presence and it's funny that her name also goes as the same uh, she is a poet she is quite out there when it comes to social media and quite positive about everything out there So I'm happy to have the one and only Grace. Hi, I'm Grace Vikramasinghe and I'm a writer um and a law student. Um I guess that's what I do mostly. I uh, do a little bit of content creation as well. So what I think about the show is I think it's um, something different, uh, uh, fun, and uh, exciting. Danu as a person, um, I've obviously met him a bunch of times, and uh, he's always well dressed and always entertaining. And uh, I look forward to getting to know him better after this show. Back with us on the show and we have Grace. Thanks for being here on the show. Thank you for having me, Dana. So you thought my this is the fun version of Date with Dana. Yeah. Dana. Sorry me. <laughs> It I, is the fun version. I came for like games and stuff. It's Reading a fun version. Fun. We'll play games off camera. But it's also <laughs> Mind games today, yeah. Grace. Mind but, games. But today's is all about creating the right kind of awareness. Um now abuse happens in many ways. uh and i know you have been very open about the types of abuse that you have faced uh although you are a very strong minded girl with a very sharp look to life but everything can cripple someone yeah. it's something can pile up and you can just break down tell me about what has been the biggest challenge for you i think um the biggest challenge is kind of living up to your own expectations mm-hmm. like i never grew up like obviously like you know being bullied in school and online and <laughs> there's a whole episode on that <laughs> with charuki <laughs> right um obviously aside from that being a girl like it's not a whole thing right but aside from all of that i think what the biggest issue a lot of us face is the abuse we put upon ourselves mm-hmm. 
because of external issues, because of sexual harassment, because of bullying, because of societal expectations, how we view ourselves is abuse itself. Right. So let's go back to your time. Uh, like, our social media is such a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. As much as we would like to say, oh, we would like to just step out of it. <laughs> you are you are not the one who is, it's not anyone else who is missing out. You are missing out. Because as much as social media can cripple you, it's also something that can really provide you with many opportunities. So let's go back in time with your issues on social media. Apart from name calling, what are the other things that have really like, you know, pinched you personally? So there was a time that you know, like I really struggled with my mental health and usually I'm a, what you see is what you get. I'm a very happy go lucky person, but everyone has their bad days, right? And on one of these bad days I got an email saying to kill myself. <laughs> right? From a random person or you know this totally person? Totally random person. If it was a person I knew I would be like Okay, like that's not going to happen, but why, mm. you know? But this, this was an email, I was like, who sends those anymore, right? <laughs> like, text me like a normal person, but no, <laughs> right? And I'm a person, like, whatever bullying I've been through, I've never spoken about it, right? Especially with my parents, I've never spoken about it because, not because I don't have a support system, I do, I have a really strong support system, but I don't want to worry them. But this specific instance, I told my parents about it and they both teared up because they couldn't imagine that someone would do that. Somebody will take the time to yeah. write an email. And find an and email. It I mean, it wasn't a long email. It just said, you know, you blank, 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 kill yourself, right? But it was just the timing of it. It was and not on a good day. Yeah, it was on a really bad day. And I was worried that I actually might act on it on some level but what what was the reason for them to send this email the, i had there was no explanation okay right so more recently like last year uh, some of my friends know about this because i sent them a screenshot and i was like oh look right um i was told to kill myself again Oh, somebody's being very persistent yeah, about this. Yeah, but like a fake account, oh. right? And some of these fake accounts are like Bole dot one, <laughs> Grace W one. So like, even if I take a screenshot of it, like it looks funny because it sounds like I'm telling to like you know. Yeah. But they're all like fake accounts. It's like no followers, no posts, nothing, just for that. Um, and that said, you should stand in front of the mirror and count all your flaws and look at how ugly you are. Right, your neck is black, your soul like ugly. Nobody wants to. I can't say it, but you no, can say it. It's nobody okay. wants to. Right, uh, like, okay, no one wants to sleep with me, but I'm a. You know, so many like you know, opposite, contradicting, contradicting. It and um, oh, this also had uh, your dog has lost weight, but you haven't. Like, big, big, like, message, right? And this was on a good day. I was on holiday, like, like I'm in a good place. I'm at my usual, like, Happy. living my life yeah. kind of level, right? And then, Marathi Naban is, I replied, right? And I was like, thank you for noticing that my dog has lost weight. He has worked really hard, <laughs> right? During quarantine, my dog and I both, like, you know, went on walks. Nice. Right? And... Genuinely, right? Like, and imagine that for you to notice online that my dog has lost weight. That's How closely work. are you following my account? Leave alone your account. How close are they following your dog? <laughs> <laughs> you might want to be worried yeah. about your dog. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I think so. All right. We're going to come back and speak about something that's uh, very interesting because all three of them uh, very frequently write things on social media. <laughs> and it also has a ripple effect. It also has comments that come. There could be a reaction. How do they handle it? And what should go on social media and what should not? Do speak to so Kumudri, I'm going to start this off with you. Uh -huh. Well, I do read 
most of your this thing. <laughs> Very rarely I comment on social media on anything. Only thing I do with my social media is work, work shared. That's it. <laughs> That's nothing else. Kumu's social media is it's, like a magazine on its, it's own. It's a magazine. <laughs> it's more of a terror magazine. <laughs> so tell me, tell me now, okay, so I understand strong opinionated people are needed in our society. Mm -hmm. But when it's strong opinionated Peter, people who can, uh, what can I say, have an opinion about everything, mm -hmm. creates a problem. Mm -hmm. For example, like this is my understanding. For example, if Mother Teresa has fought for everything, mm. it might have been hard for her to achieve that one thing. Absolutely. So I always feel it's good to have that one passion and run behind it and somebody else find another passion. So eventually all these passions could find a solution. Why I'm asking this is because I'm sure a lot of people would have told mm -hmm. you, Apo, that Kumudini is again writing. Oh, in. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I have read some of your comments as well and it's quite, you also give it back the way you hear of course. it. Yeah. All this. Like Tell me about social media. What makes you be so transparent and you have spoken out and what has been the worst reply you have got? Oh gosh, the worst reply, I, I actually don't keep track of these things. How women? How? Because every, every day there's one coming up. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, I handle it one event or one, one incident, incident at a time. At a time. Um, the reason as to why I speak out about so many things, because to me, when you look at it from uh, from a large angle, when you look at it from a bigger picture, they are all inter interrelated, right? So uh, I, t I speak about child sexual abuse. I talk about abuse overall. There's an obvious connection there. I speak about mental health, which to me is absolutely correlated strong positive correlation because your psyche gets damaged um, and on top of that I speak also about what else do I speak about? Sex ed because sex, sexual education is definitely something that has a huge impact on uh, sexual abuse mm. right because knowledge information there are so many people who do not even know that they've been abused beyond that there are people who do not know that what happened to them was wrong. Then, the people who don't know that what happened to them was illegal. Oh. Right? So there, there, are, there are different levels. There are tiers of and fi trying to fix this issue. It's not this is going to get fixed, but at least to bring it to a manageable level. There are many, many things that needs to be addressed. And the reason as to why I'm so transparent is because I believe in leading by, uh, by, by example. I've won my, my uh, sense of self, my pride in myself, uh, and my confidence the hard way. It took me a lifetime to build. And I am, I am at a point where I do not feel I need to justify that. Or you to anyone. Yes. So to me... Do you me, feel that you also, like, you know, because something that we all worry about is, you know, what would society think? What I would don't. My, you don't. Done. I do <laughs> not worry about that. I think that much is apparent when yes. you work follow <laughs> so Kumudini's you, social media feed. You know she's yeah. not worried about what it was. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, something that we were speaking about is like something that we have touched many times about sanitary napkins and this b being brought up so too many times or the fact that, you know, why can't it be such an affordable thing and freely available? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after all, it's it's something that's going to happen every month, even if you like it or not. It's going to happen to every girl, even if you like it or not. And we are going to have a higher population of women in our country, even if you like it or not. It has been proven. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have to understand that we need to give them the right support for something that is nature-oriented, not that they have gone ahead and bought it upon themselves. But leaving this aside, do women understand the element of abuse not being known in different areas? I'm speaking to you, maybe you and you, whether you have reached out to the grassroots level so that you can speak on what is the country saying. Yes. And you could tell me from today's point of view, what are the youngsters saying out there? Tell me, do women know what their body is worth? And when it also comes to being objectified, no. being used as a tool for sex no. and do they actually enjoy this act called sex? Very rarely. Sorry. Some do. I, okay. I would say okay so obviously we'll have three different perspectives. That's what I wanted it, to right? ask yeah. three of you. I do. I'm okay. sorry I'm going to just, just say it. Right? You asked us whether to. we do. We are women. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Right? So okay. And so. do you 
openly tell your partner, listen, this is what I like. Yes. Okay, good. So, um, in speaking to women, and I haven't sort of done extensive grassroots work. I like how Shanti is trying to think. No, because I am, I'm, a, I'm a lot more conscious of how I project myself than this one here, right? <laughs> yeah. I think I have to, I have had to embody a state of neutrality with the talk show and all that yes. also. I can't take sides as yeah, much correct. as you can, right? But at the same time, um, from the kind of, the, the conversations I've had with women, and again, I don't work for an activist organization. organization but so, you are involved yeah, in multiple. I, yeah. I've gotten involved and supported in different projects. I found that um, a lot of the time, the topic of enjoying sex is never discussed. No? Yeah. Mm. Sex as a whole, what sex is, is never discussed. Yeah. No, so you <laughs> have apart a, from reproduction. Yeah, mm. and also even the act of sex, nobody knows until that wedding day. If yeah. she's she, if she's a virgin on her wedding day, she's in trauma because she has not been told what to expect. Mm. She doesn't know that this is something enjoyable. Men in this country seem to have no idea what foreplay is, for instance, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's, it's a fact. It's like the sense of entitlement that the man has <laughs> that she is here for a purpose, for him to have his fun. Her purpose is to bear children. Once, if they are married, she bears the children, shop closed, duty done. You know, so that, that concept of a woman's sexuality, understanding her body, understanding her needs, the value of communicating those needs, mm. none of that is taught to us as girls in this country. Uh, sometimes the woke Colombo community will talk about it and will be like, oh, rah, rah, this is who I am and this is what I want and be more sort open of about open it. about it. And, you know, but I don't think that's the case for the majority. So, um, but interestingly, I did a program with sex workers mm -hmm. where I spoke to them and uh, it was a wonderful conversation I had mm -hmm. with them. The first time people were asking them those questions, I asked them, do you actually enjoy it? Because you are, it is a product you're selling, right? Do you enjoy it? And they were like, no. Yeah, every day it's a job. So even, you know, there is no passion in their work. Um, so I think this is sexuality is something that mm. we don't talk about at all. Not enough because Sanskrit here. Um, but at the same time, there are women who do enjoy it because of the physical stimulation, because they are in good relationships. Uh, they have partners who understand them. And uh, they might not talk about it, but there are women who enjoy their sex lives as well. Uh, like me. As a society, we've just never taught women how to how or to, to identify what enjoyment is. I think it's, it's, it's like also, they have to. Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry your pardon, darling. I think it's also about it's not just sex, sexuality. It's also about sensuality. We are yeah. not, we we do not know how to enjoy our body. Hmm. We are not even encouraged to discover to to, you know, to actually understand our body and what what sensory feelings are and what those are things that are taboo so if a woman does not know to explore her body and not feel guilty about it how on earth are we going to move past also then if you do have a woman who comes out and says this is what i enjoy and this is what i need how many women can feel comfortable to even tell their partners, their intimate partners about, mm. because it's all about pleasing him and, you know, being the right service for him. Mm. And the minute a woman speaks about it, uh, loose woman, <laughs> crazy woman, there are yes, all yes. these labels attached yeah, to anyone visible. who's outspoken. Grace, in today's world, we speak about a lot of things on WhatsApp, on Instagram, pictures go up. So first of all, Dano, like, I'm 25. I'm not that young, <laughs> right? You're definitely that young next to... <laughs> the, <laughs> to us, you are half yeah. my Puta. age. Next to Petty. the two of them, you are okay. that young. Please. Next to me, you are young. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right? But I'll try my best to, you yeah. know, represent. Um, <laughs> I think even we would assume with the younger generations and more to go that women would be more liberal in how they view sex. That like sex is not something that's done to them. It's something that they engage in, mm. right? That's one thing. 
and that also comes with like their relationship perhaps with their parents right because 99 percent of the time you can't even say the word sex in front of your parents mm -hmm. right as a girl that's even worse yeah as a boy you're expected to find out one way or no that. as a boy you're expected to like run around the mill and figure it out and you know right that, that's the idea <laughs> that when it comes to a guy's sexual history and a woman's sexual history and that is apparent even today in 2021 right but whether we like it or not Danu children and young young adults are sexually active yeah. whether it's sexual intercourse or whether it's you know on other levels like there is some sexual activity so we can't be like or like you know brush it on the carpet and be like oh like let's not talk about it and sex education starts at home I know we blame schools saying we don't talk about it this and that but even if schools don't like we can't fix the whole system but we can fix Absolutely. how we raise our kids mm. right how was it for you oh my mom gave me like she traumatized me <laughs> right See, but no, mine never did yeah never had, but, I still but had not, had not in so many details but enough to tell me like so when I was five she went abroad for her master she told me don't let anyone touch you from below this right as a five-year-old my grandma like a my dad's aunt tried to wash me and I was like take a call to my mom in Norway no one's supposed to touch me below this yeah <laughs> you could wash my face that's about it yeah yeah <laughs> you know but like see how many parents tell yeah. that to their kid because they're like I'll have this conversation with you when you're older yeah no when you're older the kid has already formed opinions they've and already gone and had out. sex yeah or like gotten abused like you know yeah. so many things have happened already that is true and actually the right age is to say it when they are trying to figure out what in the yeah. world is. Yeah. But actually saying, we have never, like up to, I think if my mom was alive, I don't think she would have ever had that conversation, no. even today. I always thought kissing made babies. We're going to see you on the other <laughs> side, please stick around. Uh, welcome back. We're talking about uh, empowering women and three very strong opinionated women speaking about their viewpoints on it. Um, is it hard to be an opinionated woman? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> not really. <laughs> so it's on a different. You're not expected to have an opinion yeah. as a woman. So when you do have an opinion, you're one of few. So you tend to be targeted. And highlighted. Highlighted, targeted. Personally, it's not yeah. hard, but when you're yeah. out in the public eye, it's hard. Yeah. Mm. Right. What was it that each one of you have been highlighted for something? No. <laughs> <laughs> Drama. More ways than one. Haters. So, uh, do men send you all DMs? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> do women send you all DMs? Yes. yes. What do women say? I, 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 women. I keep getting hit on. I've ah. gotten no. Ah, yeah. I, 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 but I think it's like from a fake account because I can't imagine a woman saying no, me. no. I, I went to the CIA without talking to me. Ah. Okay, <laughs> okay. What happened to your? So I must have been the only woman who took a <laughs> and went to the CID Cyber Crimes Unit. Okay. Uh, I did, I did because I was like, this is it. If I can't uh, see how this system supports us, then there's no point in me but talking to you. Do you know who right? sent it to you? No. No. So I tracked it. Obviously, unknown person on Facebook Messenger sends me a and sends all sorts of uh, like harassy tests. So I thought, no, I'm going to make this a case study. Now I'm like, shush the talk show, no? so let's shush about this. Right? And I screen printed everything out and I went straight to the police and the police was like looking at it, boyfriend can it? And I'm like, the boyfriend can it? I mean, come on. Then they wanted to know why uh, why he was sending it to me. So I was like, how do I know? ask him? <laughs> then they decided to tell me, and this is what's pro the problem with the system, the infrastructure here. Then they told me basically that it was because my profile was public. So they were like, public profile. So now it is kind of victim blaming, don't you think? That's what like, kind of? That is victim Yeah, exactly. So then I went to the CID. And that in itself was also a process. This happened in August. 2020 um, and at the moment I'm still waiting 
waiting for a mind you i did my investigations okay. i i found out who he is i found out his address i found out what color vehicle is parked outside his house i found out where his parents live his mother is in uh, italy i got through to her neighbors also <laughs> to say this is what your son is doing and i gave the cid was the directions to his house and i'm still waiting was the mother <laughs> able to figure it out No Are so <laughs> basically I got through to somebody who knew the neighbors and I told them to tell the mother this is what has happened that I think he has got and then I got a sorry 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 from him which means the mother has obviously gone yeah. thank god for that because the police never did yeah um yeah so I'm yeah. still and waiting for the fact of uh, shy lajjai me gena katha karanna you know no, that but, part oh, is there here's the thing right uh, and I and I think it's Okay you share nudes with intimate partners you share it with a sense mm. of trust right if somebody abuses that mm. that is uh, abuse yeah right? and that's also at the same time mm. you sending your bits and pieces to somebody who doesn't know you and hasn't invited it's you to do it it's sad that you called it bits and pieces <laughs> yeah because it was a bit and a piece yeah. right <laughs> and Sorry. if you think i mean what man out there actually believes that sending is going to make a fall in love with you no i don't know no, has it ever worked i'm um, yes is it ever is it just we go oh my god for love or for lust for any no, anything what makes <laughs> men think that you send this penis picture and she's going to go i'm going to oh, go oh wow. i, I really want to meet and like oh, honestly wow. i don't think our brains work the same way we are not going to look at it and get excited right i must Why i must feel alone on this show <laughs> we we laugh we laugh if we have a circle of friends it's a joke he's going to become a joke amongst the circle of people but he that person becomes disgusting so basically any man who's sending a to a woman is doing so with the intention of becoming disgusting and imagine Why? like what do you get very un- imagine un- if, if it's a if it's a person in a non social circle right and this has happened right he will try on friend 1 friend 2 friend 3 friend 4 like that right and gets rejected all around because he has not built a reputation yeah. for being slimy right yeah. and say the fifth friend actually likes this dude he will stand no chance because he has no like basic social cues of to carry a converse there's nothing wrong with approaching a person If you're interested, but it's the way you approach but the person. But you don't send your <laughs> like the rest of your person. I think after. that should be yeah, worried yeah. about the fifth person who was interested in that man. I I want her to. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like without but, knowing but, the rest but, of him. Yeah. But you know also, I, mean? I want to speak now. There are different elements of abuse. Now we've yeah. spoken about. These are all abuse. Actually, uh-huh. yes, that's yeah. what I wanted to say. And that I, women don't realize that they can take this to court. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the process yeah. takes a longer time, especially now that you're still. If waiting. you have, <laughs> if you have a lawyer. It, it works fast but let me know yeah. when you actually get an answer for this no, i'm still waiting okay <laughs> so tell me what was your uh, what was the time when you were abused um yeah. i think knowing what i know now because back then when it was happening i was not aware uh, or rather i didn't think it was abuse i thought it uh, there were there are different things that i have experienced some of them i thought was my fault mm-hmm. right there are things when i had uh, um <coughs> at 16 years old i had a diary where from the first page to the last page i have apologized to god um no no it's fine uh, thank you um yeah but the thing is it took me until i was around 38 to realize that i didn't have to do that because i actually felt like i was party to it you know um then there are things in in my work life in my career as i reflect knowing what i know today when i reflect i've i've known i know now that i was sexually harassed by male superiors in three different places that i worked at hmm. possibly because you look a certain way you are targeted uh, and women don't realize this also sexual discrimination in the office we normalize mm. it again as a society even men don't realize sometimes that the things they are saying are abusive mm. and toxic are creating a, a discomfort so there have been instances where i have felt uncomfortable but i didn't think that i had a right to speak about it or complain about it as all girls do mm. so there have been things where there were comments on my body by by 
management who should not have done that, right? Uh, there, I have had emails asking me out to coffees. I have had, uh, I have been going traveling to meetings in cars with superiors, male superiors who have touched me, you know, and where I've kept shut because I don't want to risk my job because it's an abuse of power, right? Um, so I've been in those situations. I have been in, uh, and those are things that I've, I chose at that time to either ignore, ignore, because I was more intent on sort of doing something with my career and you know just don't create a drama as it is. People think I'm a drama queen, and I also have that sense of um, I have some social anxiety, even though I cover it well. That if I bring it up, it's another chance for people to say, "Oh my God, the drama queen," and. I'm getting enough attention for that as well. So, do you want to yeah. make this also a laughing and matter? When, when it's you are an opinionated woman, people tend to think, "Oh, she's being a drama queen again." You get mm -hmm. dismissed. Well, let's get into a break. On on the other side, we are going to speak to Grace about her side of the story when we do come back. So, Grace, uh, before we went to a break, we heard Shanuki's story. Uh, especially someone who likes to live life and sometimes body shaming can be one of the biggest problems that we face and body shaming is there everywhere. <laughs> you can be thin, it's a problem, you can be tall, it's a problem, you can be fair. Coming up with a name for someone is the easiest thing that somebody can do. Uh -huh. And creating a meme, Sri Lankans are really gifted. We are actually a city of memes, we are so good. Mm. We, we actually come up with the quickest meme ever. Tell me how is it for you? And I am someone who has been following you on Instagram. You live your life. You do not care to hoots about anyone, which is wonderful. Tell me about the comments that you read and how do you handle this? What type of abuse have you been put through? Uh, well, Danu, like, I think like I have been bullied since I don't even know. Like, for as long as I have been like, Conscious, I think I felt like I've been bullied because, especially about my body and my hair, right? It's nice. Yeah. Mm. I used to hate it. I used to absolutely hate it. They took the highest amount of time with you upstairs to do the hair. They like you. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, like, I didn't even know I was fat until, like, someone called me a teapot when I was, like, five, right? And that was the first time, the last time I cried because someone called me fat. Right? Thank God. But it's also just how you're being viewed in society. And like, I was a little chubby, but like, nobody said it was a bad thing. And like, when you're young, like, people want their kids to be chubby, right? Like, it's supposed to be cute. It's like puppies, right? But as you grow <laughs> older, as you, you put you the dog older, on the <laughs> it's like, oh my God, like, you know. Why isn't this dog killing herself, yeah. <laughs> right? Because, you know, she's so hideous and fat and, like, big. And, in fact, uh, one of the things, um, one of the first things that I really felt quite traumatized about was there was a parent in school who told my mother that I'll lose weight when boys, when I realized that boys don't like fat girls. Mm. Right? Wow. And I love telling this story because of... Because I want to highlight how important a good support system is. And my mom said, I don't think she has a problem in that department. Right? But that is the exception. A lot of parents will come back home and also jo join in the mm. abuse of that child and say, that uncle said, you know, you're too fat and mm. no one's going to like you. You know what I mean? I but. Do. As a kid who was always, it's not a, confidence isn't about being the hottest person in the room or thinking you're the hottest person, right? And mm. I found that out a lot earlier in life. Mm. And thank God, because I never looked like my friends, right? In any shape or form, even my personality was so different to them, right? But I had good friends who never shamed me into being a certain way, obviously like, you, they bug and tease you, but like not in a like vindictive a, way. Yeah, not in a vindictive, vicious way. Mm. And they even now they always fight my wars for me, even when I tell them like don't bother, right? 
and now they have also gotten used to it. They're like, oh God, like I'm done, <laughs> you know. But it's important to have that support system. But like I said earlier on, then it's how you view yourself. So if someone comes and abuses me, whether it's you know me walking down the street, right, or like you know comments online or whatever. It's how I take it as well, because you can't go mm. around policing each and every person. Mm. It's exhausting, mm. right? And I'm not going to put my profile on private or like stop sharing bikini pictures online because it makes someone else uncomfortable. If it makes you uncomfortable, unfollow me, <laughs> right? Like, Absolutely. what the hell? I've Absolutely. been a swimmer my whole life. I've been fat my whole life. If I want to wear a damn bikini, I'll wear it, right? Alrighty. But... If it bothers you, perhaps you should go to a therapist. It's 2021. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Because that's a reflection Amen. of what you are. So Absolutely. that's one thing, right? But aside from that, in terms of like street harassment, sexual harassment, I have had my fair share. Mm. And one day I actually confronted a schoolboy who was following me, a very prominent local school whistling and following me and following me and following me and it was daylight so I didn't feel too unsafe and I could have taken him <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I turned around and I was like what do you want he's like no 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 he didn't expect me to speak right because as a woman you're supposed to be shy and timid and be and upset scared. and scared. To be scared it okay, is scary yes. if it was day night time honestly I wouldn't have like confronted him but it was broad daylight it's a school kid in a uniform, right? I turn around, I'm like, what do you want? Right? We're right opposite your school. Do you want to go talk to your principal? Like, I'm like, come, I'll take you. And then he's like, no, 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 no. I was like, no, no, no. You clearly wanted something, right? You're following me for so long. Let, you know, let's sort it out. Tell me what you want. Let's see if I can help you out. Following and whistling. Like, you're wearing a school uniform. You're representing your school. You obviously know that this... You following me and whistling and getting so close to comfort makes me uncomfortable. Mm. And you get a kick out of it. And you also know that you're immune to a accountability. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a society assurance is there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because it's that's what I always said. You know, we, we somehow fall into the category where when ten people do it, it's right. Yep. Whether it's wrong or right, we think yeah. it's right. Yes. Yeah. Um, also, I think, uh, Danu, we have a society where the, m any woman who is trying to be empowered, and I come from a personal space when I say this, things that have happened to me I haven't spoken about because I've always been more afraid that whatever little bit of independence I have had will be taken away because mm -hmm. my ecosystem will immediately say, oh, you are helpless. We need to protect you. Yeah. I don't want to be protected. I want to protect myself. Mm. So I think the fear of being seen as a helpless damsel in distress has stopped me from reaching out. Mm. And I also think that that's labor. a reality. Yeah. So now she talked about what has happened. I have been dragged into a vehicle, passing vehicle while I was walking to work. A van came and there were men who tried to drag me in. And this was in, like, in, it was the sun was out. Uh, I was walking home from work. Now, I think my mother, if she watches this show and this is not edited out, coming. she will find out yeah. through and this. And she's not right? going to let you the out mini, the house. Yeah, exactly. Don't go out of the house. She's already paranoid about like me blinking. Mm. But I would rather not deal with that stress because that <laughs> will turn me insane. Because you can yeah. easily fight the van people. You just start talking <laughs> yeah. to them inside, they'll drop you behind yeah. the door and like, Anime behind the bank. But as a community, that's also what yeah. we do know. We, we tell women that they are helpless. Yeah. We mm. teach women, we teach girls to be afraid of walking on the street. We mm. teach them to be afraid of the boys on the bus. We teach girls to be careful. We don't teach boys not to touch. harass yeah. women. So, yeah. you know. <clears throat> but as somebody who is bringing up boys, how is it for you? Well, to me, my entire focus with my son has been to make sure that he is able to look after himself and anyone else who is in his life when I am not there to do so for him. And by that I mean when he is ready to leave and you know, follow his dreams, which is what he's doing now. He's actually not living with me anymore. 
um, and that was what I wanted him to, I, it, it was relevant whether he was a boy or, or a girl, I wanted him to be able to look after himself and his environment. So he learned to cook, to clean, to iron his clothes, wash his clothes, all of that was something that I absolutely made sure my son was able to do. On top of that, I also, because I work in the whole abuse, um, the environment at home is also like that I talk about it, uh, Matt is very, very um, sensitive towards how other children are reacting and he's been able to raise the alarm on a lot of things what's going on in school or in his environment and he'll come and tell me, Ami, I think this one needs help. As long as they are aware of it, that's the Absolutely. biggest step and it that's is. one of the most, that's one of the biggest things for us to actually create. Yeah, Matthew was molested twice. I mean, I'm a paranoid mother. I, I, I thought that I would, you know, kill whoever touched my son and happily go to jail singing, but didn't happen. Um, he was molested once at, well, uh, a mall, prominent mall in Valambo and in school, right? Uh, but both times, thankfully, Matt, the first time Matt was 11, uh, the second time he was 14. He knew what to do. Hmm. He knew to That's raise the alarm. That's because of the alarm. transparency yes. that you have given the child. That's amazing. All right, thank you so much for coming. We have actually run short of time. But I would like to tell you, all three of you have created waves in your own hmm. given space, um, using whatever opportunities you all have to create more awareness. Uh, it's very important that we create awareness not only for women who have been silenced by the society, home front, partner, sibling, power, company, job, whatever. It's also important for us to give voice to even a man who feels the same. Absolutely. Yes, uh, yeah. I think gender does sure. not come into play when it's abuse. Yeah. abuse patriarchal is system targets everyone that is not in the patriarchal stereotype. Yes, that is true. So uh, thank you so very much for doing what you all do. And I'm very happy to know that uh, you all have done it even when there was no recognition needed. You all have been recognized for it also as a good thing. And you all take the <laughs> abuse that comes with it as well, yeah. which is also great. Uh, but keep your drama going. It's fun. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> that, this. I don't think that will ever change. Yeah, that's <laughs> I highly <laughs> doubt it. Definitely On the not. Note, we need to wrap things up. Grace's mom is also here watching the show live. Until we see you with another cool episode, it's a wrap of the show. Thank you.